Now, the International Budget Partnership says its latest open budget survey shows a glaring lack of transparency when it comes to how governments acquire debt and whether that debt is financially sustainable. Austin Diokwelo, Director of Policy and Global Advocacy at International Budget Partnership, joins me now to unpack the report. Austin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Esther. Um, so great to be here with you. Right. Uh, let's start with uh, you walking us through some of the key findings uh, of this report. Explain to us, talk to us about your methodologies, how many countries were assessed, and the key metrics that were taken into account. All right. Thank you so much, Esther. So, um, so we are talking about the Open Budget Survey. Um, so it's um, the it's a comparative um, analysis of how countries are faring in terms of. Um, budget transparency and accountability. It's been a reliable tool um, that most um, uh, people look forward to every two years. So this year's edition is the ninth edition. We started producing the, the survey in 2006. And what, in general, in terms of highlights of um, the results, we, we haven't seen much difference in terms of recent times compared to the last two or three. Um, let me start by saying that the survey measures three pillars. First of all, it measures availability of key budget documents, eight critical do budget documents that are required by the public to have informed decisions about how governments are raising, allocating, and managing public funds. I can talk about what do those documents are. The second pillar it measures is about um, opportunities, meaningful opportunities provided by respective country governments for their public and the citizens, and the citizens to aid getting involved throughout the entire budget cycle. And the third thing that the open budget survey measures is what we call the oversight. And oversight, there are two legs to it. First of all, legislative oversight, the constitutional rules of the legislature. And uh, in terms of oversighting government's policy decisions, including the budget and how government deploys um, the um, budget expenditures. And of course, the role of the supreme audit institutions right. who, who are the responsibility of um, auditing and government information uh, and their uh, activities. So uh, in a nutshell, we, we didn't see too much um, difference in the way countries are doing globally, including on the African continent around budget transparency. It remains steady, but in terms of comparatively to how, whether it is sufficient, um, the current level of performance is not what you call sufficient. In terms of public participation, this remains the weakest link. Um, governments are not providing enough opportunity for the public to have a say in how public revenue or right. public resources are raised and how they are deployed. And finally, in terms of audits, while audits um, oversight remains fairly stable, but in terms of the legislature, something happened during the COVID pandemic. Governments used the pandemic as an excuse to sidestep the legislature. What we have seen is that almost four years down the line, the legislative oversight has not rebounded. It's, it's been on a downward trend, and it is, this is quite worrying. Obviously, that would have implications for uh, sustainability levels. Also, although you did say transparency levels remain steady, but I knew that uh, among analysts that is still a concern. But what does the document tell you, the results tell you about sustainability levels? That we've seen, I mean, the ongoing conversations about African debt in the last couple of years, uh, in fact, between 2012 and now, we have seen a couple of countries default on their sovereign debt. Uh, but what does the report say? Yeah, thanks, Esther. So to, let me just differentiate two things. So the open budget survey measures much more than just debt. So there are a lot of other indices where it measures. It has um, a total of 145 scored indicators, and debt is just one of um, the things that are scored. So in terms of broad transparency, it remains steady, but specifically around debt, it's actually quite worrying because you know, on the on the whole, countries are not doing well in terms of debt transparency and accountability in the way they manage their debt. The key thing is that information is not going out to the public. The public do not have a say in government priorities about what to borrow for, who to borrow for. The public do not have enough information of what government is borrowing for and how they deploy it. And this lack of transparency is affecting the public because let's face it, tax is um, money that the public pays today. Debt is money that the public will pay tomorrow. So right. if the public has um, a burden in terms of payment, they need to be involved. And we haven't seen enough transparency. What the, uh, the Open Budget Survey is telling us is that during the preparation stage of the budget, 
and when the budget is approved, there is some substantial information, especially around net borrowing, the, uh, the new borrowing that government is trying to bring in to, to bridge um, budget deficits. But what we find is that when it gets to the implementation stage and audit stage, less and less information is provided. If you look at the end of year budget report, we don't have enough sufficient information about the composition of government budgets, uh, government debts, uh, the repayment terms, the overall debt stock, whether it's domestic or foreign, the maturity profile. You don't have information on the longer term sustainability. When you, in terms of sustainability, you can have some analysis during budget preparation, but when it comes to reporting on implementation, to have less information about that. The right. terms of interest payments and on an outstanding um, debt is also a challenge. Uh, if, so I could just go, if I could just quickly come in, I wanted to ask you, I mean, what category does, I mean, how does Nigeria fare measure up on these major ind indicators? And Nigeria is not doing worse than other countries, to be fair. And I know the, the, the report did use Nigeria as an example of at least uh, there's some kind of consultation during the budget preparation phase led by the budget office of the federation. And when you look at the draft medium term expenditure framework for Nigeria, it usually includes information about um, their debt and uh, the sources of debt that government intends to, to bring in, as well as um, the, um, debt sustainability analysis that accompanies right. the budget uh, document. So Nigeria is not doing too badly. But when it comes in terms of, if you look at the mid year reports or in year reports, like the quarterly budget reports, and the NGA budget implementation report, you do not find the same details that right. you find when the budget is submitted to the legislature. So it is it is not just um, 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 a Nigeria problem. It's it's a problem across, especially low income and, and developing right. countries. Austin, we're, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you so much for that insight into the report. We really do appreciate uh, your time on the show today. Uh, Austin and Diokwelu, Director of Policy and Global Advocacy at International uh, Budget Partnership, uh, looking at giving us a uh, uh, result of a survey on debt uh, across the African continent. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. We're closing by West Africa. Join us again. <laughs>